Let's pray. Publicly, I take refuge in you and lay hold on the promise. Oh, how abundant is the goodness of God which he has stored up for those who fear him and which he works for those who take refuge in him in the sight of the children of mankind. So publicly I fly to your refuge. Guard me from error. Guard me from pride. Guard me from lifelessness. Grant that your Holy Spirit would be here to do verse 23. Not by perishable but imperishable seed we are born again through the living and abiding word of God. So for every unregenerate, non-born again person at the North Campus and the South Campus and in this room, I ask that by the living and abiding word of God, as I am faithful to it, they would be born again. And strengthen your people and show them the massive relevance of this event in their lives. Through Christ I pray. Amen. With a good deal of uh, benefit and joy, I am reading the autobiography of Clarence Thomas, the uh, Supreme Court Justice. It's entitled, My Grandfather's Son. He grew up in Savannah in the Roman Catholic Church. Went to Holy Cross College in Worcester, Massachusetts. And while he was there, abandoned the Catholic Church at least for a season. And I want to read you the paragraph that describes that abandonment. During my second week on campus, I went to Mass for the first and last time at Holy Cross. I don't know why I bothered, probably habit or guilt, but whatever the reasons, I got up and walked out midway through the homily. It was all about church dogma, not the social problems with which I was obsessed and seemed to me hopelessly irrelevant. Now, as a preacher, I think a lot about relevance. Why should anybody listen to what I say? Why should anybody care what I say? Why shouldn't you all just walk out? The word relevance is uh, ambiguous. I'll give you two possible meanings. One meaning of the word relevance would be that a, a sermon is relevant if you feel that it is significant for your life. And the other meaning of relevance is a sermon is relevant when it is significant for your life, whether you feel it or not. Now, I happen to base all of my preparations on the second one in the hopes that if the first isn't true, I might help make it happen somehow. It's mainly God's work, but he uses people. So you need to know that when, when I'm thinking about why anybody should listen to me, my question is not, how can I say what they will feel is relevant? It's not my goal. My goal is, how can I say what is relevant, what is significant, what really matters in their lives, and hope to God they might recognize it to be so. 
So, in any given service, there may be a dozen or so young, angry, idealistic Clarence Thomases who might be present and full of rage. He called it the beast of rage in his heart. Full of rage about racism, global warming, abortion, limited health care for children, homelessness, poverty, war in Iraq, white-collar crime, human trafficking, the global AIDS crisis, rampant fatherlessness, greed behind the subprime mortgage crisis, the treatment of illegal aliens, the plight of Christians just coming out of prison. So they're here. Those things are seething inside of them or any one of them. And they hear me announce, in this service, I'm going to talk about the human part in being born again. And they might react like the young Clarence Thomas and simply say, that is the most irrelevant thing I can think of in relation to my issue. And so they leave. Now, I've caught you. Nobody's walked out yet. So let me just tell you that if you were to choose for that reason, don't feel bad if you need to walk out. I'm not going to think you can't see you it would be a double mistake to conclude that first part of the mistake would be that what Jesus means by the new birth is insignificant for those issues it is in fact massively significant for those issues That would be the first mistake you'd make. The second mistake you'd make would be in thinking that those are the main issues. There is another issue Jesus is even more concerned about. All of those issues deal with the relief of suffering for about 80 years of your life and do nothing to relieve it for 80 trillion years of your life. I am a pastor and a preacher of the Word of God and at the center of the Word of God is a message for all of your life, not just the tiniest front end. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you are born of water and the Spirit, you will never see the kingdom of God. Not to see the kingdom of God is to be excluded from the kingdom of God. And to be excluded from the kingdom of God, according to Matthew 8, is to be on the outside where Jesus said there is outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of of teeth and and an unquenchable fire and their worm does not die. That's the biggest issue. Nothing is more important than the glory of Christ personally seen and savored in the kingdom with as many people as we can gather in His name. I'll say that again. Nothing is more important than the glory of Christ in the kingdom seen and savored personally with as many people as we can gather with us, even at the cost of our lives. That's the most important thing in the universe. 